class, my name is Professor Singh. Good morning, teacher. We're going to learn about the properties in a closed end tube using uh, the Kunz tube as a demonstration. So over here, I have three different harmonics for my closed end tube. This is my first, second, and third harmonic. In the first harmonic of a closed end tube, you have one fourth of the wavelength equals to the length of the tube, which in our case is 1.12 meters. Similarly, in the second one, you get three fourths of a wavelength equals L, and five fourths of a wavelength equals L for the third one. If you can see, if you put these values of L uh, for lambda in the F equals V over lambda formula derived from the V equals frequency lambda formula, you will get V by 4L, 3B by 4L, and 5V by 4L to these corresponding harmonics. If you notice a certain pattern over here is that the first harmonic, the second harmonic is just three times the first harmonic, and the third harmonic is only five times the first harmonic. This means that every harmonic is multiplied by the consecutive odd integer from the first harmonic. Therefore, also, in order to calculate the frequency in which we're trying to get for our speaker system, we're going to use the comprehensive formula for the speed of sound. Temperature in the room is 19 degrees Celsius. We get a value of approximately 343 meters per second. Put this into these equations and we get 77 hertz for the first harmonic, 231 hertz for the second harmonic, and 385 hertz for the third harmonic. Meaning that in the first harmonic, we, need, we want to see a node and an antinode at 77 hertz and two nodes and two antinodes for 231 hertz, which is the second harmonic, and then one, two, three nodes and three antinodes for our third harmonic, harmonic at 385 hertz. Now let us quickly go and show a demonstration of the Kunz tube. Over here is my frequency generator connected to this power amplifier, which increases the amplitude of the speaker. The speaker then protrudes noise throughout this entire tube. Additional features that we added was the sound funnel so that the noise can go directly within this tube. The sound waves then have compressions and refractions and therefore affect the wave, the wave property over here as we can see based off the frequency on this laptop. And then we also have additional features such as the metal brace which helps keep the styrofoam balls from within going this speaker so it keeps it inside. And then we have also kept this entire system leveled by adding this block of wood and then this glue stick over here so that the error of gravity doesn't affect our results. So if you were paying attention, what, are, what is the inquiry aspect to our investigation? Sir, I believe we're meant to find out how changing the frequency would change the way the styrofoam balls uh, go up and down and how the waves sort of affect them. Could we also try out my trumpet since it produces sound as well? Of course, Victor. We'll try that soon. Play this uh, frequency for 77 hertz. Mark, could you please show me where the antinodes and the nodes are? Uh, as this is the fundamental frequency, the antinode would be here, and the node should be here where there's no movement. Harmonic 231 hertz. Try a different frequency generator using Rigpe's trumpet and see how that how see how that affects the Kunz tube. Rigpe, please play the second harmonic. Right, That's giving me a reading of 35 centimeters. It's analysis time. You know that the value of our length for this uh, second harmonic in the closed end tube is 35 centimeters, and that's from one node to an antinode, so that means it's a fourth of the lambda. Lambda would then be 1.4 meters, because it's 4L. If we put this into the F equals V over lambda expression, we get a uh, value for V equals 3234 point meter per second for a speed of sound using the trumpet in the Kunz tube. Put this into the percentage error formula, and we get a 6% error. Some potential reasons for this is because there was no stable frequency. Rigpe found it very hard to keep the same note or the same frequency because of his mouth position and also because of the different room temperature. It was potentially colder in the room than where we did it originally. So what was some of the main problems that we encountered with during this experiment? Fundamental frequency, we had problems as the temperature in different places were different. For example, the heater, which arises the temperature increasing the velocity, which makes, us, which makes it harder to find the fundamental frequency. 
And also another complication we had was that the material used to block the styrofoam balls in was non-robust and so the three aluminium foil and so we had to use a metal brace to keep the styrofoam balls in more securely. And the styrofoam balls also caused, had electrostatic energy inside them which caused them to stick to the walls of the tube which we removed properly by running our hands on the walls of the tube. Our original speaker was damaged so we had to move on to another alternative which was a trumpet and uh, after that we bought another uh, we, we bought another speaker and we used that uh, for creating the frequencies. And another problem that we encountered was that the ending note of the fundamentalist frequency is at the beginning of where the source of the sound which is which we had a non-transparent material making it difficult to sort of see the ending note of the fundamental frequency. Class, what future recommendations do you have for this experiment? We recommend using non-electrostatic materials inside the tube as it would make it easier to view the electrostatic to view properties that we're measuring as the tube materials would not stick to the walls of the tube. We also recommend increasing the diameter without sacrificing the length of the tube. This to increase the visibility of the antinodes formed during the frequency generation.